Before you can do anything cool with data, you need to store it somewhere, but it's usually not as straightforward as just putting it in a database. There's actually a lot of other ways to do this, and as a data engineer, you're gonna be responsible for understanding all of the options. And one of the most common places where you're gonna store a lot of data is in the cloud. But even in that scenario, there are multiple options for how you can store it, and depending on what you pick, could end up saving you a lot of money or costing you a lot of money. So in today's video, I wanna break down, one, what are the benefits of cloud data storage? Two, what are the three main temperatures that you'll often see for cloud storage? And then third, just some general pieces of advice for picking what's best for you. So for whatever reason, data storage, I find, is one of the more overlooked portions of the modern data stack. There's all these cool new tools doing all these different things, but without proper storage, none of it is really going to work. So let's talk about why this is so important. First, it's a cost factor. I mean, and data is becoming generally more inexpensive uh, compared to other things, but you still need to be mindful of it. And so as more data is generated, more data needs to be stored. And again, we said it's not as simple as just putting it in a database. You're gonna need to keep up with all of this scale, and that's where the cloud providers offer a great way to do this. You can basically infinitely scale your data. The alternative would be to just put it on a local network drive or maybe in your own storage facility of some sort, but you're gonna be responsible for scaling that and making sure you have it available. But that leads to the next point, which is availability. Uh, and as a cloud provider, they are essentially always available. I mean, there are nuances there, but generally speaking, they're always available and you can always access that data whenever you need it. There's very rarely gonna be an outage, uh, knock on wood for Amazon, Google, Azure, you know, of course it happens, but the likeliness of that is very, very slim. And then the last point here is that storage is just a big part of the modern data stack. Of course, it doesn't get the press as everything else, but without it, you can't really create these pipelines and everything else that you want. A lot of times the cloud storage is used as a data lake or a landing zone for all of the source data. Everything gets dropped there first, and then from there it gets extracted and loaded downstream into uh, Snowflake, BigQuery, or whatever database you're using for further analytics. You know, the last thing you want to do is bottleneck this entire process by not thinking clearly about the cloud data storage that you pick, and, imp and more importantly, the different temperatures, which will lead us into this next portion, which is the three different temperatures of data storage. Now, when we typically think about our computer storage, we think of just our general file system, but on the cloud, it works a little bit different. Each cloud provider has slightly different ways of referring to this, but Generally speaking, you have hot, cool, and cold storage, and there could be some middle ones in between. Generally speaking, the hotter storage that you pick is going to represent something that you want to access more frequently, as opposed to the coldest end of the spectrum is something that's less frequently accessed and will be cheaper because you're basically agreeing to not access it as quickly as something else. So you get a discounted rate for that. So let's break each of those down one at a time. So first is hot. Like we mentioned, this is gonna be stuff that's accessed frequently. You can think of this like a Google Drive or really like a normal file system. Things that you're gonna read and write and do all sorts of activity with pretty much every day, multiple times a day, or maybe even a couple times a week, that's what you wanna pick hot storage for. Warm or cool is gonna be that next layer, and that's something that maybe once a month, once a quarter, you're gonna need access to, but it's not something that you're frequently uh, drawing from and trying to do uh, different activities on. As an example, for me, obviously this isn't a huge business uh, purpose, but I store the backups of my YouTube videos often in this layer of storage because for me, you know, I might need to go back and revisit it, uh, you know, every now and then, every few months, but I don't need it every day. So I don't need to be paying for that hotter storage because I just don't need to access it that frequently. But I also don't wanna wait until the coldest storage because it is likely that I'll need to look at it more than once a year. So again, that leads to the coldest storage or archive or glacier, as you might call it. And that's something that you're gonna get the cheapest rates. The examples here are gonna be backups, old reports, audits, just records, things that you do not really uh, plan on getting after anytime soon. And while you're gonna get the cheapest rates here, do remember that you are agreeing when you select this setting that you're not going to access it for the given amount of time. So let's say you mark the setting as the coldest, but then you access it within a week or within a month, you're still on the hook for paying for that entire duration of the year or whatever the agreed upon setting is for that selection. Now that we know the different temperatures involved here, how do you actually go about selecting which one you're gonna choose? And it's surprisingly really easy, or maybe unsurprisingly, it's just a setting. When you do create your cloud storage on whatever platform, you'll have the option to select which temperature you want, and you should just understand what that means. 
By default, it's typically the hottest temperature, meaning it's giving you more frequent access. You're kind of agreeing to that. But how do you decide which one you should pick and which is right for you? So number one, and most obviously, I think, is how often do you need it? And a rule of thumb I tend to follow is something like this. Do you need it less than once a year? Go with the coldest. Do you need it once a quarter? Go warm or cool. Anything less than that, I'd say just stick with hot so that you're not on the hook for the longer duration and you have more frequent access to it. And the next thing here to consider is how much data do you actually have? Oftentimes you're gonna be charged by the gigabyte. So depending on how much you have is gonna determine how much you get charged. If you're just getting started and you don't have a lot of data and you're not really sure, just stick with the default and you'll be fine and you can always adjust it later. Uh, if you do have a lot of data, if you're working on some of these enterprise options, the third tip here is to see if you can split it up. Typically the way you could do this is break it up into different containers or different subdirectories based on how long or the temperature that you wanna pick. For example, you could day-to-day -day have events and files loaded to the hot storage and moved along in your pipeline. And then after maybe a week or a month or so, have it automatically moved to the coldest storage so that it can sit there as a backup. But you're gonna pay much less in terms of storage over the long term. And again, if you have a lot of data, those savings are gonna really add up for you. So data storage isn't glamorous, but the reality is without it, there is no data engineering. But now that you understand the different temperatures and the different options you have, you can be more strategic with how you store your data and how you set up your entire pipeline around it. So thanks as always for watching. Hope you found this helpful and I'll see you next week.